there's a uniform magnetic field in this region, and this rectangular wire loop is being pushed into the magnetic field at speed v. Find the direction of the induced current if there is any in the loop. The wire loop is being pushed into the magnetic field, so the flux through the loop is increasing because we're getting more area in the magnetic field. This means the original magnetic field and the induced current's magnetic field, they must be in the opposite directions. The original magnetic field is this magnetic field that's coming out of the paper. So this is out of the paper. That means we need the induced current to produce a magnetic field that goes into the paper, opposite direction. I can use this right-hand rule with the curved four fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, and we need the field to go into the paper. So into the paper inside the wire loop. That means the induced current must be flowing clockwise. So the current goes to the left, up here, to the right, and down. Notice that this part of the current is inside the magnetic field. Current in a magnetic field means there can be magnetic force acting on the current. We can find the direction of the magnetic force acting on the current using L cross B. So for this segment of the current, it's L cross B. The magnetic force goes upward. And for this part of the current, I can do L cross B, and the magnetic force goes to the right. For this part of the current, we can do L cross B, so the force goes down this way. By symmetry, these two magnetic forces, they must be equal and opposite so they can cancel. There is no magnetic force on this part of the current because this part of the current is not inside the magnetic field. So it leaves a rightward net magnetic force acting on the wire loop. And guess what? This is the resistant force the person pushing the wire loop to the left encounters. So when we change the magnetic flux through a loop, we would encounter a resistant force. And this resistant force is a magnetic force. Another interesting thing is that when we push the wire loop into the field, we get more area in the magnetic field. The flux increases to oppose this change. Notice how the magnetic forces on the wire loop push on the loop inward, trying to make the area back smaller. Now let's try another scenario. We have a uniform magnetic field here, and there is a wire rail with a conducting bar riding on the rail. Now this conducting bar is pulled to the right at the speed v. Find the direction of induced current if there is any in the loop. When the conducting bar slides to the right, the area of the loop decreases. So the magnetic flux decreases. That means uh, the original magnetic field and the induced current's magnetic field, they must be in the same direction. The original magnetic field is this one that's going into the paper. So the induced current should give us a magnetic field that's going into the paper as well. So we can use this right-hand rule again. If we want the induced current's magnetic field to go into the paper, that means my four fingers have to go into the paper inside the wire loop. That means the current must be flowing clockwise direction. So the current will go this way, up, to the right, down. Notice how I talk about the magnetic field inside the loop. We don't care about the field outside the loop because it is the field inside that provides flux. That's why we want to use the field inside the loop to decide the direction of the induced current. I cannot say the induced current has to give me an into the paper magnetic field, so the current must go upward over here. Because we have to look at the field inside the loop, not outside the loop. Another thing is, when you answer the direction of the induced current, 
do not draw an arrow to the right because your teacher will not know whether you mean to the right over here or to the right over there. So if you draw one single arrow, please make sure to draw it on the loop. Or you may also say that the current goes uh, clockwise because there is no confusion about that. One other way we may figure out the direction of the induced current in this particular case is that there are free electrons in this conducting bar. When the bar gets pulled to the right, we have free electrons moving to the right with the bar. Therefore, there is a magnetic force acting on these moving charges. And we can do V cross B, and because they are negatively charged electrons, I have to flip the direction so the magnetic force goes this way. That means those free electrons get pushed down this way, and negative charges moving down this way means positive charge flow, the electric current goes up in the conducting bar. The current going up in the conducting bar means the current flows clockwise. What if I ask you to identify the direction of the magnetic force acting on this conducting bar? The induced current in the conducting bar goes up. If I do L cross B, the magnetic force goes to the left. As a matter of fact, I did not have to bother with the right-hand rule to find my answer because when the bar gets pulled to the right, the flux changes. Therefore, the person pulling the bar to the right must encounter a magnetic resistant force, and that force has to be going to the left. Let's try one more problem. We again have a uniform magnetic field here and this rectangular wire loop is being pulled out of the magnetic field at speed V. Find the direction of the induced current if there's any in the loop. When the loop gets pulled out of the magnetic field, we do have less area in the field. However, how much flux do we have through the loop right now? Zero. None of the field lines are going through the wire loop. The field lines are just going next to the wire loop. None of the lines are going through the loop. So as the loop gets pulled out, the flux stays the same, zero. Therefore, there is no induced current. And of course, this means that no magnetic resistance force either.